Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. And today's project is this beautiful Florsheim Cordovan shoes, shell Cordovan shoes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a full sole and heel on this. Exactly same way that you see it. These are called suicide heels because they get slippery when it's wet outside and on tile floors because of all the nails. Now, most of the time when we restore these, we make a little bit of wear, wearable friendly, but the customer wants it duplicate exact like this. Here's another one. This particular one, here's an after. This is one of my award-winning shoes. Basically what I did was I reused every uh, single nail that, that came on with that, the original nails. Okay? Now why do I mention that? Because in this one here, the customer wants it the same way. So let's save as much as you can of the original items on the shoe. He's very attached to this and he bought them brand new and he's had them I think for like 25 years now. So we're going to salvage whatever we can of the original materials, well just the nails I think, and um, take them out and sand the tops of the nails to flatten them out so we can reuse them again. Yeah it's going to be a little bit of work but I think once they, uh, once they get done it should be pretty successful just like that one. All right, let's get started. All right. So basically now, you just got to be careful when we're taking something apart to salvage all the nails. Again, we want to use all the nails. We want to duplicate it just like what you got here. And we want to use this, you want to save this top lift too, so we can uh, make a pattern out of it. Now we're not going to reuse that, that cleat, we're going to put a new one on there. All that, all those nails are going to be reused, so we got to salvage all of them. just have to straighten them out a little bit that's all you see those no biggie again that's what the customers request was now all that work comes at a comes at a cost this is going to be one of my most expensive repairs on floor shimes And we're going to save this too for the nail patterns there. All right, let's continue.
lost one. Not good. It's over there somewhere. I heard it. Oh. One of the nails just went AWOL. Let's continue. <laughs> you thought you could get away from me? You thought you could run away? <laughs> get back there with your buddies. Yes, uh, we got them all now. All right, let's continue. All right, so we've got the welt off the shoe. This is the welt, okay? Now, could we have not taken it off and done the job? Yes. Most of the time I don't do it this way, but this is a little bit more detailed restoration. So a couple of reasons why I took it off. Would help if I could show you what the heck I'm doing. So, First, I wanted to get into the nooks and crannies of the uppers to try to clean them. When the welt is on there, you can't really get to those little areas there. Okay, second, I wanted to resecure this welt back on there so it'll last another 25 years. It wasn't, it wasn't really loose, but it had some couple of areas that were kind of, kind of uh, not as tight as it should be. So, once we get done with it, it'll be nice and tight and secured. This is the shank. This is a fiberglass shank. We're going to reuse that, okay? And we'll fill this in with cork and straighten that out. And at this stage, now I can clean the uppers a little bit and prep it. This heel has 69 nails, 70 that includes the V cleat there. Each heel, 70 nails, okay? And we're going to reproduce that just like the way you see it there. Now, you can just nail it, right? You can just use regular nails like... Um, I, I did this one just a, as practicing a couple of years ago. Now, these are square heads, okay? These are rectangle. So, these need to be put back in like the rays of the sun. You see it's got kind of... They're angled, okay? You can't just put them in there and be done with it. You could. You could do anything you want. But at this level, we want to make sure we want to do the exact same thing. Just like my competition shoe, that's the exact same nails that was like that. It was The heads of them were rectangle. So when it... I don't know if you can see that. It's a little small. Okay, so it's got to go back in the same way, which is tedious work. you got to make sure that those nails are exactly lined up like a nice pattern it's not just put in there randomly and twisted and turned each way, whatever way it's, you know, it's been put in there. So that's why that's why one of this this is one of the most expensive restorations. No, I'm not going to tell you how much just yet. You guys are just going to have to wait. All right, just wait. Be patient. You got to watch till end of the video to find out what I charged. Well, yeah. If I tell you now, you're not going to watch the video. All right, let's continue. fails over time. 
there's nothing there here it's nothing there so the cork kind of breaks down over time sometimes when we um, when we resole shoes it sometimes it'll look okay but you really need to replace that because some some areas of the of the footbed kind of gets collapsed a little bit and it's not the same thickness as, as it was it's always a good idea to to take these out and replace them don't worry I'm not gonna stab myself I'm gonna abs of steel man what are you talking about <coughs> I gotta be careful not to do that it's not a knife it's just a you know blunt it's just called the heel prior because we stick it underneath the heel and we pry it off hence heel prior hey awesome so here we go so once this is all scraped off Hey, can you guys tell the audio difference? I got a little mic hanging above my head. Look at that. And it's picking up pretty good sounds, I think. Tell me if you like it. Or is it just annoying you to hear everything? Either way, you're going to listen to it. So the reason I cut this, what I was cutting here, are basically the stitches so I can pick them from top of that welt. Don't forget that this is a this is basically an outsole stitch shoe, which means that the sole comes on and it's stitched, right? In order for you to restitch it again, you gotta remove, you have to remove the old thread now I've seen some cobblers not do that it's a no-no okay you have to do that it's tedious you see you got to sit there and pick every little stitch that's on there but you know what if it's done properly if it's if it's restitched properly and it'll go back in the same holes and it'll look so much better than having two three rows of stitches piled up so what happens is that when you resole the shoe you have to stitch it on there most of the shoes you have to stitch it on there and if you don't remove the old stitches off the welt and it piles up on there and then it starts weakening the welt and at some point the welt needs to be replaced and replacing that is, is tedious as well because it's all hand stitched back on there so you've got to replace you've got to take it out you, you just have to and you have good conscience yet you know if you sleep better at night I guess some people don't have conscience I guess I don't know to each his own I know my job and I know I can sleep well at night knowing that I've done the best I could on a project. You guys sit here, watch me pick these stitches all day. All right, let's continue.
See the cork fails over time. See there's nothing there. Here it's nothing there. So the cork kind of breaks down over time. Sometimes when we um, when we resole shoes, it sometimes it'll look okay, but you really need to replace that because some some areas of the of the footbed kind of gets collapsed a little bit, and it's not the same thickness as as it was. It's always a good idea to to take these out and replace them. Don't worry, I'm not going to stab myself. I'm going to abs of steel, man. What are you talking about? <coughs> i got to be careful not to do that. Well, it's not a knife. It's just a you know, blunt. It's just called the heel prior because we stick it underneath the heel and we pry it off. Hence, heel prior. Hey. Awesome sauce. Here we go. So once this is all scraped off. Hey, can you guys tell the audio difference? I got a little mic hanging above my head. Look at that. And it's picking up pretty good sounds, I think. Tell me if you like it. Or is it just annoying you to hear everything? Either way, you're going to listen to it. So the reason I cut this, what I was cutting here, are basically the stitches so I can pick them from top of that welt. Don't forget that this is a this is basically an outsole stitch shoe, which means that the sole comes on and it's stitched, right? In order for you to restitch it again, you gotta remove you have to remove the old thread. Now I've seen some cobblers not do that. It's a no-no. Okay, you have to do that. It's tedious. You see, you got to sit there and pick every little stitch that's on there. But you know what? If it's done properly, if it's if it's restitched properly, and it'll go back into the same holes, and it'll look so much better than having two, three rows of stitches piled up. Because what happens is that when you resole a shoe, you have to stitch it on there. Most of the shoes. You have to stitch it on there, and if you don't remove the old stitches off the welt, and it piles up on there, and then it starts weakening the welt, and at some point the welt needs to be replaced, and replacing that is, is tedious as well, because it's all hand stitched back on there. So you've got to replace, you've got to take it out. You you just have to. And you have good conscience, yet you know, if you sleep better at night. I guess some people don't have conscience, I guess. I don't know. To each his own. I know my job, and I know I can sleep well at night knowing that I've done the best I could on a project. You guys sit here and watch me pick these stitches all day. Alright, let's continue.
So I clamped the old base to the new heel base and want to get that exact same size. Because what I'd like to do is I'd like to put the nails in at this stage here. So we've got to have that exact size right or else the nails are going to be offset. Okay. These are the new heels and new heel bases. Okay. All the nails have been sanded. It's nice and silvery at the top part. It was a lot of nails, you know, but hey, what are you going to do? Job's a job. <coughs> Excuse me. Now what I like to do is cut out the hole for the V-cleat. And the V-cleat looks like I'm coming, I'm coming. Just like that. See? It's in the shape of a V. Hey! Is that why they call it a V cleat? Yes, V cleat. Now, some floor shimes have it on the outside edge of the heel. And some have it inset. Like that like the original one is. See that? So we're going to duplicate just like what you see here. Just like that. Alright, let's continue. Alright, basically I mark where the weekly is going to be. Now this is a little bit um, not difficult, but a little time consuming. Because leather, the JR leather is so hard, it's so dense, that you, you really have to kind of cut it little at a time. got to keep at it until you go all the way through. Alright, I won't bore you with cutting it for a half hour. Alright, let's continue. I have to take the top lift off. Get that in there. Not too bad. We'll just glue it back on there. No worries. All right, let's continue. I have to take the top lift off. Get that in there. Not too bad. We'll just glue it back on there. No worries. All right, let's continue. Alright, so let me show you where we're at. Now we've got the heel attached to the heel base. Marked all the lines. So I made this little tool here. It's just a stitch picker, right? So I sanded the tip to give it that same shape as the nail. It's like a rectangle. Basically what I'm going to do is just going to hammer it down, make the pattern. Now you got to make sure that this is kind of at a right angle. It can't be you know, like this or like that. So what I did was I, this little leather piece here shows me basically the way that's got to be pointed. Either this way or this way. It can't be here because then the hole is going to be vertical. We want it horizontal. Okay. Now when you look at the heel it's kind of concave like that, right? It's not flat. So what happens is when you hammer this, it's hollow in there, and you're not going to get a good surface to hammer on. So I made this little filler, let's call that. I'm going to put that inside there like that. This is a this is a wax, beeswax basically. So what that does is that when you hammer this in here, 
when the wax, you know, when you've got a wax on there, it's easy to, it's easy to pull out. Sometimes it gets stuck with the friction. Now you got to make sure that you're making the holes in the right line, straight line, I should say. If one of them is crooked, then it's not going to look good. It's just, especially if you've got OCD. Oh my God, forget about it. Forget about it. Then you're going to take one of those nails. You're going to put them in the little slots. Okay. And you're going to tap it in there. And that's why it takes a little bit of time to get it right. Make sure this is pointing the right direction. And we're going to do that 69 times on each heel. Oh, did I tell you guys that this is my favorite shoe? Well, maybe not after this job. <laughs> no, nah, it's still my favorite shoe. It's just a cool shoe. I like it. I like working on it. You know? Alright. Let's make those holes a little deeper. So the nails will go in there easily. Just a tedious job, man. But you know what? I like it. I think the more details, the better. You know what I mean? I just gotta make sure that I get these nails in the right spot. One at a time, one at a time. So, as you can see, it is getting there. Once I'll have them in there, I'll, I'll flatten them. I'll hammer them flat. I'll flatten hammer them. All right, let's continue. All right, we got these done. This was the hardest part, most time consuming part. Now, is it like I wanted it? Not really. It's the best I'm gonna be able to do now. It'll be all right. Just wish a couple of the nails were a little more straighter and a little more in line with what I was trying to do but they're not I think it'll be okay all right let's continue all right so this is the welt okay now we're gonna restitch it onto the shoe this is called the jerk needle see that hook at the end all right basically you go through the hole now we're not creating new holes, right? We're going through the same holes that was there before. Basically, you put the needle through, 
Okay. Got the inside thread right here. You hook it like this. You pull it out. This is what you got here. Okay. And then you run this one through there. And you tighten it up. I was explaining to you guys earlier that there's a machine that does this, right? Goodyear Welt Stitcher. Unfortunately, this is the only machine that I have my hands. <clears throat> I'm going to go all the way around the shoe now. <laughs> I think I'm going to speed this up a little bit for you guys. Let's continue. All right, so now that we've got the stitched, we get to fill that in with cork. Now cork comes in a couple of different um, couple of different ways. Manufacturers will have a hot cork, is what it's called. Actually, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's hot cork. It's like in a liquid form. Almost like a peanut butter form, you know, not really liquid. And, um, or we have it in sheets like this, okay? Or we have it in pre cut pieces. Either way, they all do the job. They fill in the void, okay? And, um, basically, this cork is. If you, if you look here, you've got a little cavity in there, right? So the cork kind of levels that surface and also gives it some cushion when you're stepping in, stepping down. So it acts as absorption, cushion. And we're going to reuse this fiberglass shank. It's still in good shape. We'll keep it the same. Once we put the cork on there with the shank, basically we're going to sand that flush so there's no high spots. If there's any bump or something, you're going to feel that when you wear it, and we don't want that. That's not a that's not a good thing. Whenever you get your shoes re repaired, you're supposed to be able to wear them, right? not supposed to be uncomfortable. Comfort shouldn't change. It, sh it should get more comfortable. So we're getting there slowly but surely. Uh, now we get to redo the other one now. Now on the uppers here, um, I wiped them down with a little bit of acetone, not much, and then um, applied some number, not number eight, the Cordovan shell Cordovan cream. Cordovan like burgundy color. 
and then uh, with some Venetian cream on there. Now once everything gets done, we're going to put a couple of more coats on it and buff it like crazy. It's not done yet, but you know, you get the idea. It's looking pretty good. Can't wait to finish these, they're going to look nice. Very nice. All right, let's continue. Oh, when we come back, well, I know it hasn't been much, you know, what time. But we'll make it up, don't worry. All right, let's continue. <laughs> you all know what time it is. Oh, Lord. I crack myself up sometimes. That loves me. I mean, if I don't love myself, who else going to love me? Well, maybe my mama. Maybe my wife. My kids. But I loves me the most. All right, children. Cover your ears. You guys have ever had a song stuck in your head <clears throat> that just does not want to leave? It just does not want to leave. <clears throat> Tried so many times listening to other songs. This one always sneaks back. Well, I'm not going to tell you guys what it is because you're going to have that problem then no all right so we are getting there as you guys can see we've got the midsoles on we recorked it and I try to use everything that I could the midsole is still in great shape so we're gonna keep that we obviously now we get to paint the bottom of the soles and then stamp them and then glue them so this is what it looks like now and when I get done, you'll have that nice pattern on the bottom like, like that. All right, let's continue. I'm getting better. No, I'm not. I got a piece of tape on the bottom. <laughs> I got you guys. I can do without the tape. Really, I can. All right, you all know, know what time it is now, don't you? All right, well, we're going to make some noise. Oh. Now, this shoe is not a floor shine imperial that's why I didn't put the floor shine imperial logo here it's still a floor shine but it's not a floor shine imperial okay but it gets the floor shine stamp at the top there I mean, they made a bunch of uh, different different styles different kinds alrighty make sure I 
sure there's no scuff marks on here. Sometimes I sand um, the surface of my hammer so it doesn't mark up the soles. Yeah, I know the soles are going to get marked up when it custom wears it, but that's not the point. The point is that it's going to leave my hands no marks. <coughs> y'all think it's looking all right huh it's getting there I think the bottom turned out a little reddish than I would have wanted it try to get it in brown shade but I think that'd be all right Now we get to put in the press. You're going to hear a whoosh sound. That's just the press. Don't get nervous. Don't get scared. It's all under control. <laughs> well, check this out. These are the new heel liners. The Beatles on there. And then also the Forsheim logo. Not too bad, not too shabby. I think the guy will be happy. I was going to put his name at the shank of the, the breast of the heel there. I don't know, we didn't talk about it, you know, so maybe he didn't want it, I don't know. Maybe he would have wanted it, but it's too late now. Next time. <clears throat> Hate when this last moves. Now the toe area doesn't have any dye on it. Because there's going to be a French tip there. The, the Triumph French tip. It's going to look real nice. Alright, press coming again. I'll make noise. And this is some dense leather. Should get in the middle of the screen, huh? <laughs> uh, a little pattern tool. It 
It's kind of cool. All right, let's continue. test of stitching soles is looking at the welt to see if it went in the same holes and sure enough it did let's continue Wet sanding makes it really smooth. Let's continue. So we're straightening out some nails so we can reuse them again. This brings back memories of my childhood. Yeah, straightening out nails, childhood memories. Growing up in Lebanon, I guess in the 70s, you know, we used to we used to collect old old nails and bent nails. And um, we used to strain them out like this so we could reuse them again. No, we didn't have any Home Depot. 
or hardware store. We may do with what we had. Because, you know, we did little projects here and there. We couldn't go to the store and buy a box of nails. That was out of the question. So, we collected all nails here and there. Construction sites, stuff like that. So we could reuse them. Just like I'm doing now. <laughs> Forty some odd years later. Uh, there's a picture of me somewhere, as a matter of fact, sitting down on my butt and with a hammer in my hand. Straightening out nails. Uh, I gotta find that picture. Who knew 40 some odd years later we'd be in America and I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> oh Lord. Anyway. Not many fond memories of childhood unfortunately. I remember the war pretty well. We were in the war for two years. Our, the Leb Lebanese Civil War started in 75. We left in 77. I've got plenty of memories of that. You know, we suppress some memories, some some things we don't want to think about, you know. But they're still there. They're still there. They're not going anywhere. getting there. Let's continue. in the tops of these. Alright, this is done. And that's how we recycle nails, kids. It's coming along okay. Not too bad. I'll, when the finished product will look much better than what this is here. Made some insoles for it too. I can't see it, huh? Okay, this glare is getting on my nerves here. good. Cool. Well, this is a surprise. I can't show you guys that. Oh, I didn't see it. Did you guys see that? I didn't. You weren't supposed to see it. Alright, we're getting there. Let's continue. All right, welcome back. We are done with another project. Now the nails gave me a little bit of trouble. It's always hard to salvage old nails, especially that small and that old 
But I think it turned out okay. Beautiful shoes. Did I tell you guys how much I love these shoes? Well, they're my favorite shoes. I did? I didn't tell you guys enough. Usually in my other videos, it's like 50,000 times that I tell you guys. And I did a little surprise for the customer. These are basically uh, Woodlore double tube cedar shoe trees. And um, I figured I'd give them a little bit of extra. Look at that. Now that's a complete project right there. Now this job costs $900. Now, this is the most expensive restoration that I've done. Um, I did the Floorsheim Yumas about a month ago. That was $800. This one's $900. Um, the reason for that price was it's so time consuming to do those heels. And it was important that we'd salvage the nails, keep them original as possible because that's what the customer wanted. Um, I think they turned out pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I think he'll be happy with it too. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you have any questions regards to a particular job, please email me at beatos at yahoo.com. All right, comment all you want, share all you want. Oh, this is not, this was, I didn't make this. This was a customer um, gave this to me. And, um, but I've ordered some shirts. They're on their way. So I was thinking maybe $23 a shirt and maybe on the mugs, I don't know, maybe $14. Not much profit margin on the mugs, but the shirts, yeah, I make a couple of dollars. So I'll keep you guys posted as soon as they get ready. All right. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you again next time. Take care.